What up, what up, everybody? It's the Rottweiler Patriots. I'm Vegas. And I'm T-Bow. And we're coming at you with another video today. Where I think we need to have a discussion about the AFC like. Championship game. <laughs> and I think this is a discussion that, you know, a lot of people are already having. This is a pretty... Hot topic, <laughs> yeah. if you will. Hot, hot. But, for those of you who can actually see the screen, I'm sure you've already figured out what this might be about. For those of you who are, you know, listening, just listening to us in the background on audio, not looking at the screen. The referees and the Kansas City Chiefs have quite the relationship, don't they? Now... A little bit of a disclaimer before we get into this to shut up the people who are going to say exactly what I know they're going to say. Yes, the Baltimore Ravens had opportunities to win the game in spite of the bad officiating. Yes, the play calling from Baltimore was terrible and they should have run the ball more. Yes, there were dumb things they did. They showed a lack of discipline in some areas of the field. In spite of the refereeing, they could have won this game themselves. Those are all true. I am not denying that they are true. That's not what this video is about. But for some reason, people create this disconnect in their mind, and I don't know if it's a product of the tribalistic culture that we live in today, where everyone's always got to be on one side of everything. You're either on this side of this thing, you're on that side of that thing. I don't know if it's because of that. That's pr I think that's probably what it is, but for some reason... It's either the Ravens lost this game themselves or the Ravens got screwed by the refs. When in reality, the Ravens blew chances to win and they got royally screwed by the refs. That is true. Both can be true at the same time. So now that I've got that out of the way, what on earth did we just witness? This genuinely may have been a bigger hosing than what happened against the Cincinnati Bengals last year, because the Bengals got screwed in the conference championship game. The refs certainly love helping out the Kansas City Chiefs against NFC North teams in AFC, excuse me, AFC North teams in the conference championship game. It's the AFC championship. Why am I saying NFC? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Jesus, like what? It's it's a thing. But th 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 this game was not officiated fairly. And I genuinely believe that had it been officiated fairly, the Baltimore Ravens would have won. And it's not... And it comes from two things. Number one, the volume of missed calls. Because there are a lot of them. <laughs> and number two the situations that those calls were in. You look at the Eagles' Super Bowl against the Chiefs last year. It is our opinion, we've made very clear, that the Philadelphia Eagles got screwed by the refs in that game. But that was one penalty. The whole game, the refs were fine, except for that one call at the end of the game. That was a singular call that was situational. Another good example would be Rams Saints in the 2018 season where the refs made a situational call. They may have had other stuff throughout the game, but it didn't have an, a direct effect on the outcome. They made a situational call after a relatively clean game that screwed over one team in a big way. That wasn't 
those those don't reflect this game. This game not only had situational calls that directly affected the, its outcome, there was also just, in general, a large volume of calls over the course of the game that made life for the Baltimore Ravens very, very difficult. That is the truth. That is the reality of this football game. And, you know, let's we got to get in these calls. You're like, what, what actually happened that really affected the game? Number one, this applies to the entire game. The Chiefs' offensive line, if they wanted to, could have pulled out a gun, shot the man that they were supposed to block, killed him, he would have been fallen flat on his face, dead, and the referees would have looked the other way. The amount of missed holds throughout this entire game, including... On the touchdown pass, Travis Kelsey. If you watch that play, the right guard is holding out the wazoo. You know, instead of a Chiefs touchdown, it's a 10-yard penalty. Kind of has an effect on things, you know. And other things throughout the game, too. Just lots of missed holding throughout the entire game. So, that's true. On another one, uh, I think it was the Chiefs' second touchdown drive, I can recall off the top of my head. They, <laughs> there was one play that netted a decent amount of yards for Kansas City, where the, the running back, who was in on the play, can't remember if it was Pacheco or someone else, got away with a pretty blatant chop block. It was a shotgun, runner in the backfield, I think play action? It was either play action or just run in the backfield. And there was a free rusher off the edge, and the running back picked him up. And by picked him up, I mean dove head first at his knees, which is a chop block, and that is a more dangerous play, in my opinion, than a head-to-head -head hit. Because a guy gets, gets his foot planted, you hit his knee backwards, that knee's gone. <laughs> his career will never be the same. Those plays are dangerous. They are very, very dangerous. And one of the things that irks me about the modern NFL, especially when they preach so much about player safety, which everyone who pays attention knows they don't actually care about. The amount of times I've seen guys just dive at someone's knee. Use, actually block them with the knee. They don't get called. So many chop blocks never, ever, ever, ever get called. And so many plays where a guy just goes at the knees and they don't call it. Or you have the instance of what happened to Brees Hall earlier this year, where Brees Hall was fined for, quote-unquote, lowering his helmet, when what was happening was Brees had just caught a check down and he was turning to run up the field, and someone was about was diving headfirst at his knees, about to take out his knees. Now, Brees Hall tore his ACL last year and missed the whole year. And an ACL tear absolutely has long-term ramifications for you. You're not going to be the same guy. I'm amazed that Brees played as well as he did this year. He was He's, he's, he's one of the guys who I've seen recover best from an ACL. ACLs can really hamper you down over the course of your career. Now imagine back-to-back -back ACL tears in a season. That's awful. So Brees has to lower his whole body, which of course includes his head, just to protect his knee from getting blown out again. And he got fined for that. He got fined for that. So now is the NFL not calling penalties that lead to some of the most brutal injuries in the game. They're actually penalizing players for protecting themselves from it, which isn't okay. So they got away with a chop block. Shouldn't have happened. Then you have the Kyle Van Noy penalty. Kyle Van Noy, during a moment where things are chippy between both teams gets up in Kelsey's face. Kelsey naturally flops, starts whining to the ref, gets the call, and then once he gets the call, he starts laughing in Van Noy's face. Which, you know, for going by what happened to Zay Flowers, is a taunting. We'll get to that in a moment. So that happens, and that gives the Chiefs a free 15 yards on a drive where they kicked a field goal at the end of the first half. You know, those 15 yards might have you know, meant something in the context of that drive. Maybe they don't get a field goal. That changes the rest of the game. 
that completely changes the rest of the game. It goes from two-score game to one-score game. So you have that. Then you move on to the second half. You have Zay Flowers makes the biggest play of his life, and God forbid he dares to be happy. God forbid. You show a little bit of human emotion after making the biggest play of your entire life. No, we got to call Conting. Oh, Travis Kelsey. Antics all second half, laughing in a guy's face because he flopped his way into a penalty. Wind the ref about and got it. And just all, all throughout the game, Kelsey was doing the same thing or even worse than what Zay was doing. Never got called once because it's the Chiefs. I mean, the Chiefs will get away with taking their helmet off on the field, which is very illegal. Mahomes literally, <laughs> Mahomes literally switched helmets on the field without the Chiefs calling a timeout or him sitting out a play in the Dolphins game. That is hella illegal. That is so illegal. That is a 15-yard penalty. No call. So, you know, the Chiefs do not get treated the same way as everybody else. Zay Flowers makes the biggest play of his life, gets called taunting. So, that's garbage. That should not be happening. That's not okay. Then you also have, there were two roughing the passer calls in this game that Patrick Mahomes got. The first one, I think you can have a little bit of an argument for. I think it's bad luck. But this is the one where the Ravens defender is basically sticking his hand out in an attempt to block the pass that he sees Mahomes is attempting. And he catches Mahomes in the face. He didn't grab the face mask, he just, his hand got him in the face. I think that that is a soft call, and I don't think that should have been called, but I understand where you could come from with calling that. The other one, though, was the one where it's like, it looks like a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit. Until you watch the play and realize, and what's funny is Gene Steratore, who, you know, um backed every single one of their BS calls. Like, it's almost like he's a propagandist for the league undercover at CBS for something. I don't know. He has been very annoying as of late. Said he lowered his helmet to initiate contact with Mahomes' head. And then you watch the video, and you see when he starts to go towards Mahomes, his head is at the same level as Mahomes is, and he actually lowers his head to try to avoid hitting Mahomes in the head and hit him in the chest. But then Mahomes lowers his head to match where the defender has lowered his. And then there's head-to-head -head contact. That, to me is garbage because it puts the offender in an impossible situation. You lower your head to hit somebody's chest. That's you making the right decision. That's what the NFL wants you to do. You should not be penalized if the quarterback also lowers his head down to the level of where your head is at. And he got penalized for that. It makes... Defenders already have it so hard in today's league. They have it impossible. They can't get anything to go their way with rules, refs, any of it. You create impossible situations for them like this. It's awful. So, I understand you look at it, oh, helmet to helmet hit, it doesn't look pretty. He wasn't trying to hit Mahomes in the helmet. He actually aimed away from Mahomes' helmet. Mahomes moved his helmet into the path. That shouldn't be on the defender. That should be Mahomes isn't doing a good enough job to protect himself. It's like Brady said. You need to be able to protect yourself at the end of the day. You can't let the refs do it for you. So we have that. Then we get into the meaty part of everything. <laughs> the multiple missed pass interferences that had a direct effect on the outcome of the game. Like, for instance, on the bomb to Adele Beckham Jr., that was pass interference. That did not get called. They should have had first and goal on the one-yard line, and they didn't. 
Then you go to the Lamar Jackson interception. That was defensive pass interference. If you watch the play, Isaiah Likely sees that the ball is thrown behind him, stops to try to get it, and then two Chiefs defenders pile drive him away from the ball. That is pass interference. I don't care who you are. I understand that it was a stupid throw for Lamar to make. It was not a good decision. That doesn't change the fact that it was blatant pass interference and should have been called, and instead of the Chiefs getting the ball back, the Ravens should have had the ball on the one-yard line. First and goal. You think that changes the rest of the game? You think they get one yard, four, four tries to get one yard, with the running, with them being the best running team in the NFL, and the Chiefs having the 28th best running defense. You think one yard is going to be hard for Baltimore? That's not, oh, they missed a chance later on drive. That is, the refs gave the Chiefs the ball in a bad call. They get a touchdown there. You know, you look at the end of the game, that's a tight game. That has an effect on the outcome. Direct effect on the outcome. Then, there was a play. I can't remember exactly which drive it was on, but Lamar took a sack, and the defender grabbed him by the face mask. It should have been a 15-yard penalty instead of a loss of yards for the Ravens. But no... And that's not one that a lot of people saw. That's not one that's getting talked about because it's not as obvious. But Lamar, and it was also kind of weird at the bottom of the pile, but the defender did grab Lamar by the face mask. It should have been a 15-yard penalty for Baltimore. Didn't happen. Didn't get it. Then you have, on the Ravens' final drive, that joke of a missed pass interference penalty. Where Isaiah likely is turning to try to get to that ball, Lamar is throwing him on the outside. And he's just straight up tackled in the middle of the field. I don't think I need to say anything more about that one other than what on earth are we doing? What is that call? That is not okay. That goes that that instead of fourth down, we have to kick a field goal. It's first down. Ravens in a crucial drive at a pivotal point in the game. These things affect the outcome of the game. They do. And then there's another thing, too. There was another missed call that happened in the second half. We, we, you know, we talked about this. The Chiefs' offense didn't do squat in the second half because the Ravens' defense was really good. So the Chiefs naturally resorted to drilling Ravens' defenders and getting away with it. There was a play, third and seven. Chiefs hit Mahomes on an out... Or Mahomes hit Kelsey on an out route to the left side. He was wide open. Of course, you watch the play, and you're like, how is he so wide open? Then you get the end zone angle, and you see Watson drilling Kelsey's man. He didn't just tackle him. He hit him hard. Lowered his shoulder, drove right through him. Textbook offensive pass interference. But no, it's the Chiefs. They get special treatment. Chiefs punted later in the drive, but still. Think about the clock. The other day, clock matters here. Clock mattered in this one. At the end of the day, these calls had a direct effect on the outcome of the game. And that is two years in a row now where the Kansas City Chiefs have made it to the Super Bowl because of bad officiating that directly affected the outcome of the game. It happened against Cincinnati. It happened now. And if Trent, if things remain consistent, they're probably going to get a nice little screw job in their favor against San Francisco. Because you saw what happened with Philadelphia last year. The referees made a call that directly affected the outcome of the game. This is a problem that the NFL has had for a while, especially with this team right here. And it is not okay. And it's especially not okay considering you know that the NFL really wants the Chiefs to make it because they have an active 
financial incentive to do so because of Taylor Swift and the viewers that she brings. Without her in the Super Bowl, the, it's not going to get the same number of viewers. That's just the truth. And the NFL knows it. And they clearly weren't trying to hide the fact that they know it today. That was not okay. It's blatant what they're trying to do. And there needs to be accountability. They cannot keep getting away with this. We need to do something to solve this problem because it isn't okay. You can't just sit there and make calls that affect the outcome of the game the way this does, especially in a way that very obviously financially favors the National Football League. That is the reality that we live in currently. And we got to do something about it. Because this ain't okay. T-Bone. <laughs> I know I've let you hang in for a I hot know, minute man. there, but I, 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 I really, no, I, had a, I had a lot to get off, man. This, this no, really no, and truly I wanna hear it all. irks me to no end. I want to get your thoughts on all of this. I wanna... No, dude. Trust me, you're good. I want to hear it all. So, really... I want to first say, you know, because I'm, I don't want to say I'm repeating what Vegas is going to be saying, but you know, we're going to be reiterating. Two things can happen. The Ravens can make bad decisions while also the Chiefs getting aided by the refs. The two can be, the two can happen at the same time. Um, so that's that's very, and it is very apparent that the the scales were tipped in their way. It just is. Even even I, I even a Chiefs fan I think should be able to see see excuse me um you know some some of what had happened I mean are, are you are you kidding are we serious right now um obviously we don't need to go through all the minutia of all the plays because I mean Vegas was was on top of that but I mean if we just if we just look at some of them you know some of you know you think oh. This didn't, and this didn't directly affect a touchdown. No, but time matters, clock matters, spacing matters, yards matter. The whole thing matters. So, um, and then there's and also the fact, up, you know, let's let's look at the Zay Flowers one. Yeah. The Ravens did mm -hmm. turn the ball over on that drive, but the Ravens, instead of having the ball at the ten yard, they had it at the twenty five yard line, and they fumbled the ball in the one yard line. Yep. It is very possible, if not likely, that if they don't call that penalty, the Ravens don't turn the ball over and they at least get a field goal. Oh, so absolutely. That's also a way where it's like, even though the Ravens made a mistake there, they had an opportunity, that call still can absolutely. have an effect. It, it, but the butterfly effect is a real thing, I should know. They called Nikhil Harry out of bounds <laughs> in 2019. Okay, all right. It seems he's, seems he's having a little bit of flashbacks here. Um, yeah. But I mean... <laughs> 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 Look, man, it's but the I best think, example I got. <laughs> but like, let's let's take this into account. Zay Flowers, rookie wide receiver, makes it to the AFC, makes it to the AFC Championship. You're a rookie that is that is contributing to a good solid. At the time of the call, I believe it was like seventy percent of the offense. It was a lot. It was a good, yeah. good percentage. He had a great. Over half. He had a great game. He had over a hundred yards, and he's been their best receiver all season long <laughs> for a very good reason. He is a great football player who I actually had the pleasure of seeing play in person while he was at Boston College last year. Boston College came up Penn State. They did beat us. Thank you. Thanks to our offensive coordinator deciding to stop calling plays that work. And the referee hey, is now. jobbing us. Yeah, he is. He's the head coach of Coastal Carolina now. Who just gave us their star quarterback. We might actually have a playoff team next year. And then they also won that game because the referees called uh, the softest pass in France I've ever seen in my entire life on fourth down. We basically won the game and the refs were like, no, you didn't. You know, ref problems. Yeah. <laughs> the, the ACC ref problem is a different rabbit hole for a different time and probably not this channel because we don't really talk college football that much. But anyways, continue. Another crap. 
another crappy call. Um, but I mean, you take a look at it. You take a look at Zay Flowers, rookie wide receiver, contributing to a lot of the offense, and here you are, excited that you just made a big old play, getting to the like getting near the red zone. And your your legs getting dragged. You want to get off, and you want to be happy. You just made a big play. You made a game changing play. I thought. I thought that was like that. When I looked at the TV, I said that's the play that will get the Ravens back in because it was. It was fifty some yards. Lamar waited and he threw it, and it was excellent. There was excellent footwork, and it was. You're right to be excited. But no, it's it's a penalty. And then, and then immediately, you know, Zay Flowers once the ball gets turned over, you see Travis Kelsey twerking on twerking it on the uh, on the field or doing whatever he wants to do, you know, making fun of the safeties, laughing at them, laughing at the linebackers, all that. And so that makes a double that creates one a double standard, and two, that's not that's not something good to, to, to set a precedent towards. I think it's very important that either we need to keep very aggressive football as in very, very aggressive football, like early 2000s, Ed Reed, Ray Lewis, like hard-hitting, really aggressive football, or we're going to make softer defense completely. We cannot have a double standard of sometimes it's okay when there's hard-hitting, sometimes it's not. We cannot flip-flop. We have to decide. And I personally would like more hard-hitting football. Obviously, there is a there's a case to be made on why that shouldn't be but when you have some defense getting punished for hitting hard and then some defense getting rewarded for it 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 really it confuses everyone and and like vegas said or like it's like vegas quoting tom said sometimes the quarterback has to protect yourself you can't just you cannot just ride on roughing the passer calls even though i believe it was the 2018 afc championship that uh, roughing the passing saved the Patriots. That being said, um, it really, you know, you just you can't rely on the refs all the time. And um, I really, the Chiefs. I, I completely agree that something has to be done. Some type of accountability, some type of something has to be done. It's, it's, it's imperative. Because this is not sustainable, this is not continuable, this should not be a continuous thing to occur. And obviously, I mean, I'm just spitballing here. I mean, maybe maybe not a commission of some sort, but, but something. Some type of something to keep refs accountable. It has to happen. Refs have just, it's just gone insane. And it's blatant. It is blatant that you can see their greasy fingers tipping the scales of one team. Now, I get it. I understand completely. NFL is a sport that I actually believe, by definition, can can be rigged at any time based on le- how, how it's legally based in its constitution. But that being said... And also, and I get, sometimes you can see little tiny bits of ref bias shown. All all games, all teams go through you know a game where the refs are crappy. But it is getting ridiculous and continuous and showing blatant bias towards one team, and that is not okay. So, it really, there has to be some type of accountability, some type of something made by the league. I don't know what, obviously, me and Vegas will think of something, because obviously, uh, us, Roger Goodell's head is, 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 is not, not, not the right place to think of ideas, but, yeah, (laughs) no, he's, he's, he's a, he's a horrible commissioner, horrible, horrible, so, but, it's just, it's abysmal, it really is. I really, I think, I think the one that hurt me the most was, I mean, obviously there's pass interference. That's that's bull crap. The face mask bull crap. I think the taunting got me the worst because you saw, you saw Trav just going out there peacocking it, and here's Zay Flowers, rookie that's that's doing something great for this team, and you suddenly shun him. He was freaking out on the bench. He was having a mental breakdown. He cut his hand on the bench. 
he cut his hand on the bench because he was so upset of what of what occurred after the taunting and uh, the fumble because he was so hard on himself. Are you kidding me? This is what we're doing now. So, I think that it is blatant the refs' side. It's blatant how the refs wanted to, to go. And something should change. So, that that's my two cents on it, really. Yeah, I mean, we have been saying for a long time something should change. I think... To anyone, any fan of any team, I think everyone can universally agree that there's a ref's problem. But what we saw tonight, especially as a continuation of what we saw last season, is particularly egregious. And just at the end of the day, it's not okay. I know that a lot of people were rooting for the Detroit Lions because, you know, the Lions, they've been the joke of the NFL for years, looking for their first ever trip to a Super Bowl. What an opportunity for that franchise. Dan Campbell did a great job. And by the way, I do not think Dan Campbell was responsible for that loss. That's that's We're, we're going to talk about that in a future video, but that loss ain't on Dan at all. But let's say the Lions make the Super Bowl against the Chiefs, right? The Detroit Lions, and this is a fact, have been screwed hard by the referees more than any other franchise in the history of the NFL. If you look at the whole course of the NFL and its history and everything that's happened with them, the Lions have easily been screwed more than anyone else. And I think part of that comes with being the joke of the league for a long time. You know, the bad teams don't get the right calls, but it makes it so much harder for bad teams to get back. But even this year, when they're one of the best teams in the league, they're a top three football team. The fourth being the Chiefs, by the way. Just, 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 just to let y'all know. Um, they still got jobbed. They still got royally screwed. Just like what happened in Dallas. Even though they're one of the best teams, best teams usually get calls at some point. That didn't really happen for the Lions. You take a team that historically does not ever get calls and, in fact, gets royally screwed often. Against Kansas City in the Super Bowl, you know, this Chiefs team that the last two years has just been really longer than two, let's be honest. The darling of the league and the NFL referees. What would you think is going to happen in that Super Bowl? What do you think is going to happen? You know? So... It... Even though a lot of people wanted the Lions to win, and I kind of among them, I was rooting for San Fran because of predictions between, you know, me and T-Bone, our little competition, San Fran winning men I won on the season, which they did, so we'll get to that in a future video as well. But I would have been very happy if Detroit had gone to the Super Bowl. I would have loved it if they'd gone to the Super Bowl. I love the Detroit Lions. I've loved them all year. They've been a fun team to watch. They're a very likable team. I love Dan Campbell. Everything he's been doing. Jared Goff has been ball and probably harder than he did in Los Angeles in 2018. Just for the sake of the refs, what they've been doing in their history, it might not be a bad thing that San Francisco won that game. We might actually get a slightly more fair result from the officiating and the fact that we even have to have that conversation means that there is a very, very, very big problem that needs solving. And tonight was that problem displayed in all of its 
glory. And that's just the truth of it. And unfortunately, unless people get really, really serious about accountability, which I don't see happening, it's not going to fix. You could implement all of these systems of, oh, we can review this, we, we can review this, we can review that, we can do this, we can do that. They're still going to find ways to screw teams over. You can make changes. They're still going to find ways to do it, because they can. They will. They'll ignore it. Just look at VAR and soccer. Oh, my word. <laughs> Real Madrid against Almeria, I can tell you right now. Barca fans, and really fans of everyone, like every team, not Real Madrid and La Liga, but especially Barca fans and Almeria fans and Girona fans are very mad about what happened with the VAR incident. You know, you can add these things. It doesn't change the fact that they will still have the capacity to rig it, and there really is an accountability. And at the end of the day, you could screw a call. They could screw a call in the league's favor, and the league would just be like, oh, we don't think they messed up, no accountability. But you could choke kind of in other areas. You know? That, there needs to be some additional measure. There needs to be some measure where people who aren't administrators of the league or owners or something, who don't have a financial incentive to make the wrong calls to favor a certain team, like what happened today, have a say in things. Like, you could literally do a thing every week where, like, you have a bunch of calls that are... Someone could submit, like, a system I've just come up with off the top of my head right now. Someone basically says, we thought this was a bad call, we're going to submit this in a dispute. And then every, every team, every week, submits calls that they were like, was this a good call or a bad call? And then that's sent out to every... That, that list is compiled and sent out to every team. And the players and coaches on every team all vote whether or not they thought X was a good or a bad call based on what the rules of the league are. Now, obviously, there's going to be some level of bias there. Like, for instance, if a call favored you, potentially, it shouldn't... Maybe you can get into you. Like, there's still going to be issues with that there. But creating a system where someone who does not have a financial incentive one way or the other, needs to have a say in accountability. Because, like, you send it out to the players, they're like, this is good, this is bad, you send it back, and then based off of those results, you have to have hard, fast rules that if you break those rules about how you deal with the situation, you know. So, that... That is the reality. These problems lie really deep. And some of the fixes that would help are not going to be enough to solve this problem. You have to go much deeper and much further to fix things. That's the truth. It's the unfortunate truth that we live in. In today's NFL and the way that it is run. Today the league showed its true colors in a really big way. And that they are shameless enough to job a team because they know one team will bring more viewers than another because of one specific individual. And I have nothing against Taylor Swift other than that her music is not very good. In my opinion. She's done nothing wrong in all of this. She's supported her boyfriend and been a fan of the game. It's everyone else around her that that's the problem. It's the way the league's handled it. It's the way the networks have handled it. The way the media's handled it. So. That's where we're at. T-Bone, you got any final thoughts before we wrap this thing up? Just, just like one. Uh, I don't, I don't hate any team. I only love the Panthers. That's it. I only love the Panthers. I never hate any teams. I'll, I'll, I'll kid about the the Broncos, but it's it's always just been love for the Panthers. And I do have teams that I support in the Super Bowl, but it's there's never really any animosity in it. It's just who I want to win more. 
I have never wanted the 49ers to win a Super Bowl more than I have today. Even if it means it ties them with the Steelers and the uh, the Patriots for most Super Bowls. I never have wanted it more than today. And that's partially probably because, you know, some of the Panthers are on the team, like Panthers legend Sam Darnold. <laughs> um, but, of course you have McCaffrey. Of course. But I, I really, and this is no hate from the Chiefs, I really want the 49ers to get their revenge. I want Kittle to get his rank, gosh darn it. That's, and that's all from me. Yeah. You're nicer than me. I hate teams. I And I don't just hate the Chiefs. I hate the Kansas City Chiefs, which annoys me because I actually really like Andy Reid a lot. I love Andy Reid. He's such a great dude and such a great coach. I have a tremendous amount of respect for what he does, but unfortunately, I hate the Chiefs. I really hate the Dallas Cowboys. I really hate the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, I, I, I show a little more in that respect. But yeah, go San Francisco. Full stop. I it, it, I don't want to see the league get away with this. And I especially don't want to have to listen to people pretend like this was a legitimate Chiefs Super Bowl, and quite frankly, legitimate dynasty. Because that'll be two Super Bowls jobbed for them. Straight up. Please be sure to leave your thoughts down in the comments below. We would love to hear what you all have to say. And that is going to do it for us today. Thank you all so very much for watching. Please be sure to hit the like button. Please be sure to subscribe. And we will see you all in the next video.